Smoky some buns and bean. One fat, one short, one lean. These horrible crooks, so different in looks, were equally horrid and mean. Yes, that's what the children round about here used to sing about Farmer Boggis, Farmer Bunce, and Farmer Bean. These three farmers were all rich men. They were also very nasty men. In fact, all three of them were just about as nasty and mean as anybody you've ever met. Their three farms were close together in the valley. Boggis was a chicken farmer, and he had thousands and thousands of chickens. He was enormously fat because he used to eat three boiled chickens smothered with dumplings every day for breakfast and for lunch and for supper. Bunce was a duck and goose farmer. He kept thousands of ducks and geese. He was a kind of pot-bellied dwarf. He was so short, his chin would have been underwater in the shallow end of any swimming pool. He lived on a diet of doughnuts and goose livers, and this diet gave him a tummy ache and a beastly temper. Bean was a turkey and apple farmer. He kept thousands of turkeys in a large apple orchard, and he never ate any food at all. Instead, he drank gallons of cider, which he had made from the apples in his orchard. He was as thin as a pencil, and the cleverest of them all. And that's why all the children used to sing... Boggis and buns and bean, one fat, one short, one lean. These horrible crooks, so different in looks, were equally horrid and mean. On a hill above the valley, there was a wood, and in this wood, there was a huge tree. Under the tree was a hole, and down in the bottom of the hole lived Mr. and Mrs. Fox and their four small foxes. Every evening, as soon as it got dark, Mr. Fox would ask Mrs. Fox what she wanted for supper. Now one evening, when supper time came round, Mr. Fox put his usual question to his wife. Well, what shall it be this time, my darling? A nice plump chicken from Farmer Boggis, a nice fat duck from Farmer Bunce, or a delicious big turkey from Farmer Bean? I think we'll have duck tonight. <laughs> Bring us two nice fat ducks, one for you and me, and one for the children. Right. Ducks it shall be. Two of Farmer Bunce's best. Now, do be careful, Mr. Fox. Uh, my darling, I'm always careful. I can smell those farmers a mile away. Whichever farm I'm going to, I always approach it with the wind blowing towards me. So if there's anybody lurking in the shadows ahead, the wind carries the smell towards me. I can even tell which farmer is which just from the smell. How can you tell that, Father? <laughs> well, it's easy. Boggy gives off a stink of rotten chicken skins. Bunce reeks of goose livers, and as for Bean, the fumes of apple cider hang around him like poisonous gases. That's all very well, my darling, but don't get careless. They'll be waiting for you, all three of them, and they're very dangerous men. Oh, don't you worry about me, Mrs. Fox. I can take care of myself. <laughs> I'll see you later. And off went Mr. Fox along the tunnel towards the mouth of his lair. But he would not have been quite so cocky if he had known exactly where the three farmers were waiting at that moment. You see, Boggis and Bunce and Bean knew very well what was going on, and it made them wild with rage. They were not men who liked to give anything away, and they certainly didn't like to have their chickens and ducks and turkeys stolen from them. Every night, each of them would take his shotgun and hide in a dark place somewhere on his farm, hoping to catch Mr. Fox. But Mr. Fox was always too clever for them. Now, they knew perfectly well where Mr. Fox lived, so tonight, instead of waiting on their own farms, they had decided to take their guns and go up to the hill to wait for Mr. Fox. At that very moment, they were just outside the entrance to his hole, each one crouching behind a tree with his loaded gun. And what is more, they had chosen their positions very carefully, making sure that the wind was not blowing from them, towards the fox's hole. In fact, it was blowing in the opposite direction, so there was no chance of their being smelled out. This time, they were sure they were going to get him. He doesn't stand a chance this time. He's done for, dang and blast him, done for good and proper. Oh, yes, we can't miss tonight. He's got to come out soon. Then, bam. And good riddance, too. He's stolen more than enough chickens and ducks and geese from us. It's about time he got what's coming to him. Yeah, you're sure this is the old? Of course I'm sure. 
I'm not as stupid as I look, you know. Oh, you couldn't be. Why, I'm a good <laughs> man to punch your face for you. I'm glad you right. I'm All right, now save that for later. He won't come out at all if he hears all that racket going on. Now keep quiet, both of you. Do you think we'll have long to wait? I shouldn't think so. He must be getting hungry about now. Oh. Look, don't fire until he gets clear of the hall. OK. Wait till he's right outside. Oh. We don't want to run the risk of missing him. Oh? Right. As soon as he's Hold in... Hold on a minute. I... I think I heard something. Are you sure? Or... I can't hear anything. I mean, I'm listening out and I can't well, hear a sound. Um, I mean, there's nothing going on. if you but... stop chattering for a minute, you will. There it is again. It's him. He's coming. Right. This is it. Get ready. At that moment, Mr Fox poked his face out into the night air and sniffed. He moved an inch or two forward and stopped. He sniffed again. He was always especially careful when coming out from his hole. He inched forward a little more. The front half of his body was now in the open. His black nose twitched from side to side, sniffing and sniffing for the scent of danger. He found none, and he was just about to go trotting forward into the wood when he thought he heard a tiny noise, a, a soft rustling sound, as though someone had moved a foot ever so gently through a patch of dry leaves. He flattened his body against the ground and lay very still, his ears pricked. He waited a long time, but he heard nothing more. So thinking it must have been a field mouse or some other small animal, he crept a little further out of the hole. He was almost right out in the open now. He took a last careful look round. The wood was very still. The moon was shining high in the sky. And just then, his sharp night eyes caught a glint of something bright behind a tree not far away. It was a small silver speck of moonlight shining on a polished surface. Mr. Fox lay still watching it. What on earth was it? Now it was moving. It was coming up and up. Great heavens, it was the barrel of a gun! Quick as a whip, Mr. Fox jumped back into his hole, and at the same instant... Did we get him? Oh, hang on a minute, while I get my, my flashlight out. Showing it on the hall. Is he there? No, but his tail is. He shot the tail, but missed the fox. Do you mean to say we missed him? Dang and blast, we shot too late. We should have let fly the moment he poked his head out. Well, he won't be poking it out again in a hurry. How long are we going to have to wait before he gets hungry enough to risk another try? Could be two or three days before he starts to get desperate. Two or three? I'm not sitting around here for three days. Perhaps we should go away and come back in three days and then Idiot. we... Idiot! He might come out while we're away. Well, what are we going to do then? I know, I know. Let's dig him out. Now you're talking sense. We should be able to dig him out in a couple of hours at the most. Now, you stay here and keep watch, Bunce. Come on, Bean. Let's get the shovels. Right. Meanwhile, down in Mr Fox's hole... Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. That was a close shave, my poor tail. It was the finest brush for miles around. I told you to be careful, my darling. Yes, yes, I know, but I never thought the three of them would be waiting for me just outside the hole. And downwind, too. Never mind, Dad. It'll soon grow again. Oh, no, it will, it will never grow again. I shall be tailless for the rest of my life. <laughs> Still, I suppose I'm lucky to be alive at all. And another thing. Now they've found our hole, we're going to have to move out as soon as possible. We'll never get any peace if we... What was that? Listen. What is it? Shovels. That's what it is. Shovels. They're digging us out. Oh, are you sure? I'm positive. Oh, dear. We're all going to be killed. We're going oh, no. to be killed. Oh, no, we're not. 
Not if I have anything to do with it. Look, Dad. Look up there. It's a shovel. It's coming right through the ceiling. Come on. There's not a moment to lose. What are we going to do? A fox can dig quicker than a man. Nobody in the world can dig as quickly as a fox. But, Dad... Dig. Dig, my darling, as you've never done before. Dig for dear life, everybody, and dig downwards. We've got to go deep, as deep as we possibly can. And so they all began to dig furiously. They dug down deeper and deeper below the surface of the ground. Their front legs were moving so fast you couldn't see them, and gradually the scrunching and the scraping of the shovels became fainter and fainter. And then, after about an hour, Mr Fox stopped digging. All right, hold it. That's enough. I think we've done it. They'll never get as deep as this. Well done, everybody. I should like you to know, children, that if it wasn't for your father, we should all be dead by now. Oh, your father is a fantastic fox. When the sun rose the next morning, Boggis and Bunce and Bean were still digging. They had dug a hole so deep you could have put a house into it. But they had not yet come to the end of the fox's tunnel, and they were all very tired and very cross. Dang and blast! Whose rotten idea was this, anyway? It was Bean's idea. What? Speak up, I can't hear you. I'm not surprised, considering the amount of muck and wax you got in your ears. I can see dead flies and bits of chewing gum as well. No wonder you can't hear. Shut up and listen. Now, I want that fox. And I'm going to get that fox. I'm not giving up till I've strung him up over my front porch, dead as a dumpling. Well, we'll never get him by digging, that's for sure. We must have dug down for miles already and there's no sign of him. Got any more stupid ideas, Bean? One of these days, Bunce, one of these days, I... Oh, yeah. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I have got another idea. Now, what we need on this job is machines. Mechanical shovels. With... With mechanical shovels, we'd have that fox inside the five minutes. Hey, that's not a bad idea, Bree. It's a very good idea. Now, Boggis, you stay here and see that fox doesn't escape. Huh? Bunce and I will go and fetch our mechanical diggers. If he tries to get out, shoot him quick and don't miss this time. Bean walked away and Bunce trotted after him. Boggis stayed where he was with his gun pointing at the foxhole. Half an hour went by, and down in the tunnel, the foxes crouched in silence, waiting to see what was going to happen next. And then suddenly, away in the distance... Dad, what's happening? What are they doing now? It's an earthquake! Look up there! I can see daylight! They're coming through! I knew it! I knew they'd do it! They're using mechanical shovels! Come on, everybody! Dig for your lives! <sighs> If you thought you dug hard before, that's nothing to what you're going to have to do now. Dig! 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 And now there began a desperate race, the machines against the foxes. Sometimes the foxes would gain a little ground and the clanking noises would grow fainter. But then a few minutes later the machines would come back at them and the crunch of the mighty shovels would get louder and louder. Up on the hill, the three farmers were in a state of high excitement. Keep going. We'll get him any moment now. And you can't say to him yet? Not yet, but I think we're close. Just wait till I see him. I'll chop him into pieces. Hey there, Mr. Fox. Uh, we're coming to get you. You've had your last duck. You'll never come prowling round my farm again. <laughs> <laughs> but by six o'clock that evening, the three farmers were no nearer Mr. Fox and his family than they had been when they started. Bean and Bunce switched off the motors of their mechanical diggers and climbed down from the driver's seats. Both men had had enough. They were tired and stiff from driving the tractors all day. Bean's face was purple with rage. Bunce was white with anger. Dang and blast that filthy stinking fox! What the heck do we do now? I tell you what we don't do. We don't give up. That's what we don't do. No, we'll never let him go. Did you hear that, Mr Fox? It's not over yet. We're not going home till we've strung you and your family up as dead as dingbats. What's the next move, then? We're sending you down the hole to fetch him up. 
Down you go, you miserable midget. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, that's a good idea. I... What? Oh, no, I'm not going down that hole. I refuse, do you hear? I absolutely refuse. All right, then. There's only one thing to do. What's that? We starve them out. We camp here day and night watching the hole. They'll come out in the end. They'll have to. That evening, three tents were put up in the crater on the hill. One for Boggis, one for Bunce, and one for Bean. The tents surrounded Mr Fox's hole and the three farmers sat outside their tents, eating their supper. Boggis had three boiled chickens smothered in dumplings. Bunce had six doughnuts filled with disgusting goose liver paste, and Bean had two gallons of cider. All three of them kept their guns beside them. Boggis picked up a steaming chicken and held it close to the fox's hole. The rich scent of the chicken wafted down the tunnel to where the foxes were crouching. Can you smell this, Mr. Fox? Lovely, tender chicken. Why don't you come up and get it? Oh, Dad, couldn't we just sneak up and snatch it out of his hand? Don't you dare. That's just what they want you to do. But we're so hungry. How long will it be till we get something to eat? Their mother didn't answer them, nor did their father. There was no answer to give. As darkness fell... Bunce and Bean switched on the powerful headlamps of their two mechanical diggers and shone them onto the hole. Now, we'll take it in turn to keep watch. One watches while two sleep, and so on all through the night. What if the fox digs a hole right through the hill and comes out the other side? Oh, you didn't think of that one, did you? Oh, yes, I did. Oh, Go on, then. Tell us the answer. Mm. Well, how many men have you got working on your farm? Thirty-five. I got thirty-six. And I got thirty-seven. Yeah. Now, that yeah. makes one hundred and eight. Uh, now, yes. Yeah, we'll, oh. we'll spread them all out round the hill. Each man will have a gun and a flashlight. Huh? I'd like to see the fox that can get through them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the order went down to the farms, and that night one hundred and eight men formed a tight ring around the bottom of the hill. They were armed with sticks and guns and hatchets and pistols and all sorts of other horrible weapons. This made it quite impossible for a fox or indeed for any other animal to escape. The next day, the watching and waiting went on. Boggis and Bunce and Bean sat upon small stools staring at the fox's hole. They didn't talk much. They just sat there with their guns on their laps. Every so often, Mr. Fox would creep a little closer toward the mouth of the tunnel and take a sniff. Then he would creep back sadly and shake his head. This waiting game went on for three days and three nights. Down in the tunnel, things were going from bad to worse. The foxes were slowly but surely starving to death. If only we could just have a tiny sip of water, Dad. Isn't there anything you could do? Couldn't we make a dash for it? We'd have a little bit of a chance, wouldn't we? You'd have no chance at all. I refuse to let you go up there and face those guns. I'd sooner you stay down here and die in peace. My darling, I've just had a bit of an idea. What is it? Well... I'm not sure if it would work. Why not, Dad? Because it means more digging, and we aren't really strong enough for that after three days and nights without food. But if we can manage it... We, we can, can, we Dad! Can, we well, can! Well, I suppose we could give it a try. You just tell us what you want us to do, and we'll do it. We've got to start digging again, but this time we must go in a very special direction. We must go sideways... And downwards. Sideways? And downwards? Yes. We've got a long way to go. And it might not work, but I think it's worth a try. Come on, let's get started. But where are we going, Father? I can't tell you that just yet, because the place I'm hoping to get to is so marvellous that if I described it to you now, you'd get so excited you wouldn't be able to dig at all. And then if we fail to get there, which is very possible... You'll probably die of disappointment. I don't want to raise your hopes too high, my darlings. 
and so they started to dig once more. How long they dug this time, they didn't know, because there were no days and no nights down there in the murky tunnel. At last, Mr. Fox gave the order to stop. I think we'd better take a peep upstairs now and see where we are. I know where I want to be, but I can't possibly be sure we're anywhere near it. Slowly, wearily, the foxes began to slope the tunnel up toward the surface. Up and up it went until suddenly they came to something hard above their heads, and they couldn't go up any further. Mr. Fox reached up to examine the obstacle. What is it, Dad? It's wood. Wooden planks. What does it mean, Dad? Where are we? It means, unless I'm very much mistaken, that we are right underneath somebody's house. Be very quiet now while I take a peek. Carefully, Mr. Fox began pushing up one of the floorboards. The board creaked most terribly. They all ducked down, waiting for something awful to happen. Nothing did. So Mr. Fox pushed up a second board. And then, very, very cautiously, he poked his head up through the gap. I've done it! I've done it first time! Come on up! Come up and see where you are! What a sight for a hungry fox! It's Bogus's chicken house number one. It's exactly what I was aiming at. I get it slap in the middle. First time, too. Isn't that fantastic? And if I may say so, <laughs> rather clever. The four small foxes scrambled up out of the tunnel. And what a fantastic sight it was that now met their eyes. They were in a huge shed, and the whole place was teeming with chickens. There were white chickens, and brown chickens, and black chickens, red chickens, spotted chickens, hundreds and hundreds of them. And the little foxes went absolutely wild with excitement. They started running around in all directions, chasing chickens all over the place. Hold it! Hold it, everybody! Now calm down! Don't lose your heads! Let's do this properly. First of all, let's have a drink of water. They all ran over to the chicken's drinking trough and lapped up the lovely cool water. Then, when their thirsts were quenched, Mr. Fox chose three of the plumpest hens, and with a clever flick of his jaws, he killed them instantly. Right. Come on, back to the tunnel. No fooling around now. The quicker you move, the quicker you'll have something to eat. One after another, they climbed down through the hole in the floor, and soon they were all standing once again in the dark tunnel. Mr. Fox reached up and pulled the floorboards back into place. He did this with great care so that no one could tell that they'd ever been moved. Now, son, you run back to your mother with these chickens. Tell her to prepare a feast. Tell her the rest of us will be along in a jiffy as soon as we've made a few other little arrangements. The small fox ran back along the tunnel as fast as he could, carrying the three plump hens. He was exploding with joy. He had a long way to run, but he never stopped once on the way, and he burst in upon Mrs. Fox so suddenly that she gasped in surprise. Oh! Oh, you gave me such a shock. What on earth has happened? Look, Mother, look. Wake up and see what I've brought. Good gracious, I must be dreaming. No, no, you're not dreaming. <gasps> They're real chickens. We're not going to starve to death after all. We're saved. But my dear child, where on earth did... Boggis is chicken house number one. We tunneled right up under the floor and you've never seen so many big fat hens in all your life. And Dad said to prepare a feast. The others will be back soon. A feast it shall be. What a fantastic fox your father is. Hurry up, child, and start plucking those chickens. And meanwhile, far away down the tunnel... Now for the next bit, my darlings. This one will be as easy as pie. All we have to do is dig another little tunnel from here to there. Where's there, Dad? Don't ask so many questions. Start digging. 
Mr. Fox and the three remaining small foxes dug fast and straight. They were all too excited now to feel tired or hungry. They knew they were going to have a whacking great feast before long, and the fact that it was none other than Boggis's chickens they were going to eat made them gurgle with laughter every time they thought of it. It was lovely to think that while the fat farmer was sitting up there on the hill waiting for them to starve, he was also providing their dinner without knowing it. Phew! This is hard work. Is it much farther, Dad? No, keep digging. We should be almost... Halt! Who goes there? Why, it's Badger! Oh, Foxy! My goodness me, I'm glad I found someone at last. I've been digging around in circles for three days and nights, and I haven't the foggiest idea where I am. <laughs> it's all right, son. It's only Mr. Fox. My dear Foxy, what in the world has happened to your tail? Oh, don't talk about it, please. It's a painful subject. Oh, I see. I say, Foxy, have you heard what's happening up on the hill? It's chaos. Half the woods has disappeared, and there are men with guns all over the countryside. None of us can get out, even at night. We're all starving to death. Who else is affected? Oh, all us diggers. Me, and Mole, and Rabbit, and all our wives and children. Even Weasel, who can usually sneak out of the tightest spots, is right now hiding down my set with Mrs. Weasel and six kids. <gasps> oh, what on earth are we going to do, Foxy? I think we're finished. No, we're not, Badger. Far from it. I'm afraid this mess you're in is all my fault. Is it? How? Uh, the farmers are after me and they're not going to give up till they've got me. Unfortunately, that means you as well. It means everyone on the hill. Oh, then well done for. My poor wife is so weak, she can't dig another yard. Nor can mine. And yet at this very minute, she's preparing for me and my children the most delicious feast of plump, juicy chickens. Oh, now look here, foxy old man. <laughs> Stop teasing. It's not on, you know, at a time like this. But it's true, Mr. Badger, sir. Dad's not teasing. We've got chickens galore. And because everything is entirely my fault, I invite everyone to share them. You and Mole and Rabbit and Weasel and all your wives and children. There'll be plenty to go round, I can assure you. Do you really mean it? I most certainly do. Do you know where we've just been? Where? Right inside Boggus's chicken house number one. No! Yes! But that's nothing to where we're going now. You've come just at the right moment, my dear Badger. You can help us dig. And meanwhile, your son can run back to Mrs. Badger and all the others and spread the good news. Tell them they're invited to a fox's feast. Then bring them all down here and follow this tunnel back until you find my home. Right you are. Off you go, son. Quick as you can. And now they set to work and dug on in silence. Badger was a great digger and the tunnel went forward at a terrific pace now that he was lending a paw. Soon they were crouching underneath yet another wooden floor. Mr. Fox grinned slyly, showing sharp white teeth. If I'm not mistaken, we are now underneath the farm which belongs to that nasty little pot-bellied dwarf, Bunce. We are, in fact, directly underneath the most interesting part of that farm. Ducks and geese! Juicy, tender ducks and big, fat geese. Exactly. But how in the world can you know where we are? I know my way around these farms blindfold. For me, it's just as easy below ground as it is above it. Now, I'll just push up these floorboards. I've done it. I've hit it smack on the nose, right on the bullseye. Come and look. This, my dear old badger, is Bunce's mighty storehouse. All his finest stuff is stored in here before he sends it off to market. Quickly, Badger and the three small foxes scrambled up. They stopped and stared. They stood and gaped. They were so overwhelmed, they couldn't speak. For what they now saw was a kind of fox's dream, a badger's dream, a paradise for hungry animals. 
Against all the four walls of the great room, stacked in cupboards and piled on shelves, reaching from floor to ceiling, were thousands and thousands of the finest and fattest ducks and geese, plucked and ready for roasting. And up above, dangling from the rafters, there must have been at least a hundred smoked hams and fifty sides of bacon. Suddenly, as though springs had been released in their legs, the three hungry small foxes and the ravenously hungry badger sprang forward to grab the luscious food. Hold it. This is my party. I'll do the choosing. We mustn't overdo it. Mustn't give the game away. Mustn't let them know what we've been up to. We must be neat and tidy and take just a few of the choicest morsels. So to start with, we shall have four plump young ducks. Just look how lovely and tender they are. <laughs> no wonder Bunce gets a special price for them in the market. All right, Badger. Lend me a hand to get them down. You children can help as well. Huh? There we go. And now I think we'd better have a few geese. Three will be quite enough. We'll take the biggest. These three over here will do just fine. <laughs> Gently does it. That's the way. And what about a couple of nice smoked hams? I adore smoked ham. Don't you, Badger? No. <laughs> <laughs> Fetch me that stepladder, please. Oh, and Badger... Do you like bacon? Oh, you know I do, Foxy. I'm mad about bacon. Let's have a whole side. That big one up there. And carrots, Dad. We must take some of these carrots. Carrots? What are you talking about? You know we foxes never eat things like that. No, not for us, Dad. For the rabbits. They only eat vegetables. That's all they do eat. Oh, my goodness, you're right. What a thoughtful little fellow you are. Yes, take ten bunches of carrots. And now we shall have to borrow from our friend Bunce <laughs> two of these useful bush carts over in the corner. Now, come along. Load up carefully. That's it. Ducks, geese, ham, bacon <laughs> and carrots. <laughs> That's everything. Now then, we lower the carts through the hole in the floor. <clears throat> Carefully now. That's right. And I'll replace the floorboards so that no one can guess the way we came in. <coughs> now, my dears, take a cart each and run back as fast as you can to your mother. Give her my love and tell her we're having guests for dinner. The badgers, the moles, the rabbits and the weasels. Tell her it must be a truly great feast. And tell her the rest of us will be home as soon as we've done one more little job. Yes, Dad. Right away, Dad. Now we have just one more visit to pay. And I'll bet I know where that'll be. Where? Well, we've been to Boggis and we've been to Bunce, but we haven't been to Bean. It must be Bean. You're right. But what you don't know is which part of Bean's place we are about to visit. Which? <laughs> Just you wait and see. Come on, let's dig. Uh, 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 doesn't this worry you just a tiny bit, Foxy? Worry me? What? All this stealing. Uh, oh, my dear old furry frump. Do you know anyone in the world who wouldn't swipe a few chickens if his children were starving to death? Hmm? The trouble with you is you're far too respectable. There's nothing wrong with being respectable. Of course there isn't. But look, Boggies and Bunce and Bean are out to kill us. You realize that, I hope. I do, Foxy. I do indeed. But we don't want to kill them, do we? Oh, I should hope not indeed. We wouldn't dream of it. All we are doing is simply taking a little food here and there to keep us and our families alive, right? I suppose so. If they want to be horrible, let them. We down here are decent, peace-loving people. Well, I suppose if you put it that way... Thank you. And now let's get on with the digging. All right. <laughs> I, I... Good heavens! Hmm? What on earth is this here ahead of us? There's something flat and hard here, Foxy. It looks like a, a solid stone wall. No, no, no. It's a brick wall. Now who in the world would build a brick wall under the ground? 
Very simple. It's the wall of an underground room. And if I'm not mistaken, it is exactly what I'm looking for. Now look, see the cement between the bricks? It's old and crumbly, so the bricks can be loosened without much trouble. See? This one comes away quite easily. And... Good gracious, who's this? Go away! You can't come in here! It's private! Why, it's Rat! I should have guessed we'd find you down here somewhere, Rat! Go on, beat it! This is my private pitch! Now look here, Rat, old boy! I'm not going to look anywhere! This is my place! I got here first! My dear Rat, me and Badger here are starving. And if you don't get out of the way pretty quickly, we're likely to do something desperate. Don't touch me! Don't touch me! You haven't heard the last of this! You'll be sorry you mark my words! Yeah! Let's got rid of him! Now, let's get a few more of these bricks out and make a bigger hole so we can get through. Right. Come on. Well, this is it. This is what? The place is empty. Where are the turkeys? I thought Bean was a turkey farmer, Dad. He is a turkey farmer. But we're not after turkeys now. We've got more than enough food. Then what are we after? Take a good look round. Don't you see anything that interests you? I can't see anything except a whole lot of big glass jars standing on those shelves. Dad, they've got cider written on them. Is this... Exactly! Bean's secret cider cellar. Now, go carefully. Don't make a noise. This cellar is right underneath the farmhouse itself. We'll just take two jars. You know, cider is especially good for badgers. We take it as medicine. One large glass three times a day with meals, and another at bedtime. Ah, it will make our feast into a banquet. Can I have a taste, Dad? Well, just a little one. <laughs> oh, wow! Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Wowie! <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. this is some cider. Yes, well, that's 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 quite enough. <laughs> this is not the ordinary weak fizzy cider you buy in a store. This is the real stuff. You've got to be careful because if you drink too much, you know. <laughs> oh, I... beautiful! Ooh. Hmm? Oh. Oh, Foxy. Yes. It's like melted gold. <laughs> it's like drinking sunbeams and rainbows. You're poaching. Put that down at once. Oh, no, not you again. If you great clumsy brutes come messing about in here, we'll all be caught. Now look here, Rat. Get out at once, do you hear? Or I'll... Get up and get that cider, Mabel. You know Mr. Bean doesn't like to be kept waiting. Especially when he's been out all night in a tent. Shh. Nobody make a sound. Quick, hide behind these jars. Fox and Badger and the smallest fox jumped up onto the shelf and crouched behind a row of big cider bottles. Peering round them, they saw a huge woman coming down into the cellar. At the foot of the steps, she paused, looking to right and left. Then she turned and headed straight for the place where Mr. Fox and Mr. Badger and the smallest fox were hiding. She stopped right in front of them. The only thing between her and them was the row of cider jars. She was so close, Mr. Fox could hear the sound of her breathing. <sighs> Peeping through the crack between two bottles, he noticed that she carried a big rolling pin in one hand. How many will he want this time, Mrs. Bean? Bring up two or three. He drank four yesterday, Mrs. Bean. Yes, but he won't want that many today because he's not going to be up there more than a few hours longer. He says the fox is bound to make a run for it this morning. It can't possibly stay down that hole another day without food. I'd be glad when the rotten brute is killed and strung up on the front porch. And by the way, Mrs. Bean, your husband promised I could have the tail as a souvenir. The tail's been all shot to pieces. Didn't you know that? 
Oh, you mean it's ruined? Of course it's ruined. They shot the tail but Mr. Fox. Oh, heck, I did so want that tail. You can have the head instead, Mabel. You can get it stuffed and hang it on your bedroom wall. Now hurry up with that cider. Yes, ma'am, I'm coming. I'll just get this second one down off the shelf. If she takes one more, she'll see us. Will two be enough, Mrs. Bean? They're very heavy. My goodness, Mabel, I don't care so long as you get a move on. Then two it is. He drinks too much anyway. There's rats down here again, Mrs. Bean. I can smell them. Well, for heaven's sake, woman, you know where the poison is. Bring that cider up first. You can put the poison down later. <sighs> yes, ma'am. Quick, before she comes back, grab these jars and let's make a run for it. What did I tell you? You nearly got us all nabbed, didn't you? You nearly gave the game away. You keep out of here from now on. I don't want you around. This is my place. Well, Rat, it doesn't look as though you're going to be around here much longer. Hoppycock. I'm not afraid of the poison. I sit up here and watch her putting the stuff down. She'll never get me. And you put that cider back where you found it. It's not yours, it's mine. It's sailing. That's what it is. You won't miss a couple of jars. You drink too much anyway. It's not good for you. Thieves! Robbers! Bandits! Burglars! I'll just put these bricks back into place so no one will know we've been in. What bad manners Rat has. All rats have bad manners. I've never met a polite rat yet. <laughs> there we are. Now that should do it. Now, oh, home to the feast. They grabbed their jars of cider and off they went. Along the tunnel they flew, past the turning that led to Bunce's mighty storehouse, past Boggis's chicken house number one, and then up the long home stretch towards the place where they knew Mrs. Fox would be waiting. We'll soon be home now. Think what's waiting for us at the other end. And just think what we're bringing home with us in these jars. <laughs> oh, that ought to cheer up poor Mrs. Fox. Yes, she'll feel much better as soon as she's got some cider inside her inside. <laughs> Oh, oh, good gracious. <laughs> I made a joke. Oh, I'm a Oh, swiftly we glide back to our beautiful brides. They'll not feel so rotten as soon as they've gotten some cider inside their insides. They'll not feel so hollow if only they swallow some cider inside their insides. Oh. They were still laughing and singing as they rounded the final corner and burst in upon the most wonderful and amazing sight any of them had ever seen. The feast was just beginning. A large dining room had been hollowed out of the earth. In the middle of it, seated around a huge table, were no less than twenty-nine animals. They were Mrs. Fox and the three small foxes, Mrs. Badger and three small badgers, Mole and Mrs. Mole and four small moles, Rabbit, Mrs. Rabbit, and five small rabbits, Weasel and Mrs. Weasel, and six small weasels. The table was covered with chickens and ducks and geese and hams and bacon, and everyone was already tucking in. We couldn't wait, Mr. Fox. Please forgive us. We just couldn't wait. Ah, that's all right, my dear. We brought some cider to make this into a real banquet. Oh, yeah. Now then, Mr. Badger, tuck in. <laughs> Eat as much as you want. There's plenty for everybody. Oh, I will, Foxy, I will. But first, a toast. I want you all to stand and drink a toast to our dear friend who has saved our lives today, Mr. Fox. Oh. Mr. Mr. Fox! Fox. <laughs> <laughs> going to make a speech, but I would like to say one thing, and it is this. My husband is a fantastic fox. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For a jolly good fox. For he's a jolly good fox. For he's a jolly good fox. And so is all of Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you and I would just like to add this. <laughs> <laughs> Better out than in. Oh, seriously. I would just like to remind you all that this delicious meal comes to you by courtesy of Messrs. Boggis Bunsen Bean. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
And I hope you enjoy it as much as I know I am going to. <laughs> but now, my friends, let us think for a moment of tomorrow and the next day and the days after that. The position is this. If we go out, we will be killed, right? Oh, yes, yeah, that's right. right. Yes. We'll be shot before we've gone a yard. Exactly. But ask yourself this. Who wants to go out anyway? What? 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 Oh, yeah. We are all diggers, every one of us. We hate the outside. The outside is full of enemies. We only go out because we have to, to get food for our families. But now, my friends, we have an entirely new setup. We have a safe tunnel leading to three of the finest stores in the world. Ooh, tunnel, yes. 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 You know what this means? It means that none of us need ever go out into the open again. <laughs> we will make a little underground village with streets and houses on each side, and every day I will go shopping for you all. And every day we will eat like kings. <laughs> While all these festivities were going on, Boggis and Bunce and Bean were sitting beside their tents outside the fox's hole with their guns on their laps. It was raining and water was trickling down their necks and into their shoes. He can't stay down there much longer. He must be on his last legs. That's right. You'll be making a dash for it at any moment. Keep your guns handy. So there they sat, waiting for the fox to come out. And as far as I know, they're still sitting there.